Hi, and welcome to the Virtually Yours podcast, Outsourcing Mysteries Exposed, the no BS hustle-free podcast for business owners who outsource or provide outsourcing services. I'm your host, Rosie Shiloh, virtual assistant advocate and owner of Virtually Yours, the virtual assistant network. Let's get started. Hi, everyone. Welcome to today's episode of the Virtually Yours podcast. Today, I have got Hayley Robertson with me, who um, I have asked to come along and have a chat to us about the whole experience of imposter syndrome in her world, in her business, because like me, she runs an online community, um, putting herself in front of other people and leading the way. And sometimes that can be like just putting a big target on yourself for people to tell you exactly what they think of you. And I've seen that happen in so many cases, not for Hayley in particular, but for other people in those positions. So I thought Hayley would be a great person to have a chat to about imposter syndrome. So Hayley, welcome. Thanks, Rosie. It's great to have a chat to you about this very important topic. It is important. I think it's one of the biggest hurdles with business, with keeping it going, keeping your mindset in the right space. And um, you know what? I was watching SAS Australia the other day and Yana Pittman, who I love because she's my doppelganger, right? So I get to watch myself do SAS, which is so cool. I'm like really tough. Um, and my kids and I were joking about how if it was me on there, I'd be in the corner crying. <laughs> so not tough at all. That she was saying about how when she was expressing confidence in being a fast runner and, you know, I want to win this Olympics and all that sort of thing, that we have such a culture of, of um, tall poppy syndrome and people just go, no, no, you're not allowed to do that. So when you're in a position in business where you do need to sort of step up and lead the way, you might not be bragging all the time, but you're putting yourself out there as someone who is saying, yeah, I can do this, I'm confident, um, I want to support you. And sometimes that can kind of lead to that whole being a victim in the end of tall poppy syndrome. Have you had that happen to you at all in your business? Uh, not so much in my business, but definitely in my corporate life before I started my business. So uh, often I was, I guess, even the only woman in the room going into meetings and uh, always in those kind of leadership roles. So you had a team of people and uh, it, it was a lot of pressure really just to be on all the time. And I don't think I kind of realised how much that um, carries over when you are running your own business until I launched my membership uh, last year where it did actually then become, um, you know, I was the leader of this community and putting myself out there. So, uh, and and I think I had a few people actually say to me, oh, you know, it's, it's such a big thing for you to be doing that. And I, I probably hadn't given it much thought really up until that point because it was kind of, for me, just an extension of, you know, what I was doing in my corporate life, being a leader and, and managing teams and people and feeling like it was a fairly sort of smooth transition over uh, to managing my online community as well. So, uh, you know, it, I guess sometimes until people point it out to you, you don't actually realise how much you are out there and how much people are looking at you and how much people are listening to you and following you. And I think for a lot of business owners, because I, I coach other businesses, uh, there's kind of that light bulb moment, I think, when people realise that people are following them, people are listening to them, people are part of their Instagram community or their Facebook following. And, and whilst they may not have had that intention or, uh, you know, wanting to put themselves out there as a leader, you automatically become one as soon as you own a business. You are the CEO of your business. You are, everyone is looking at you. And I think there's that saying, you know, it's quite lonely at the top because, yeah, you do become kind of not isolated, but but you do become that focal point, I think, for people, uh, yeah. with, whether you realise it or not. Yeah, it's so true. Isn't it funny how people feel so um, helpful uh, and, and useful in identifying for you things that can make you feel like those double, yeah. you know, edged sword, backhanded compliments. We're so grateful for those, aren't we? So that's why we create the communities that we do because they are generally for people who are running businesses and it is something where you can really, you know, for us too, a lot of them are home based. So they've got the physical isolation, but the the psychological isolation as well, because you know, most of the people that you're dealing with from day to day are your customers. And you can't talk to your customers about 
your feelings of inadequacy or anything like that. However, they are very, very happy to tell you about your inadequacies. <laughs> so, you know, you need to have other spaces where you can go, hey, you know, is this for real or am I just, you know, is this the itty bitty shitty community in my head or what's going on here to make it so that you can kind of get more of a balanced perspective? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and and you're right, people people do point it out to you uh, and, it, and kind of, I think, prompt those thoughts or those feelings that you probably would never have actually even realised uh, without someone else pointing it out to you. So it, it does become something that kind of gets that focal point and gets people kind of watching you, whether you feel it or not. Um, and, you know, I think people get surprised often as well when people might comment on social media or send them messages. And I've definitely had that before. I've had, uh, you know, people that were following me kind of, you know, messaging me or reaching out or perhaps their expectations uh, were different uh, to what I was, um, you know, to mine as well. So, yeah, it, do it does become sort of something that you're aware of. But I tell my clients as soon as you start getting bad feedback, you're doing something right because you're actually getting in front of enough people uh, to be able to elicit that response anyway. So, you know, silence isn't golden in, in uh, social media world. You need to have that engagement, that interaction with your, with your followers and your clients. And most of the time you will find that it is positive, but every now and again you do get one that's, um, you know, not what, what you expected, but, you know, that goes, I think, a little bit with the territory and it's just about ignoring the, the small minority of, of voices that you do hear online because it can be quite a negative space if you let it um, we tend to amplify the negative, don't, don't we? You know, yeah. we'll go, well, mm -hmm. I, I know so many people who they'll receive a compliment and they'll be reluctant to accept it, but if you insult them, they'll take that in. They'll take yeah. it right in and they'll be like, oh, yeah, you know, I suck. <laughs> yeah, and it, and it plays on your mind and then yeah. you start questioning all of the other things that you're doing as well and and really it's just, you know, that person that probably sent you the message hasn't even thought twice about it and they've moved on with their life and you're still sitting there thinking about it. So um, it's just perspective is really, really important in this, these kinds of situations and making sure that you are balancing it with, mm. you know, thinking about all those other pieces of really great feedback that you get along the way as well. Yeah, and and allowing them to 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 be the dominant thing because we, we our businesses have a target market and clearly your target market are the ones that love what you do, and when people say that they love what you do, then you've met your target market. Your target market, you're doing the right thing. Sometimes people are going to come through that experience your um, marketing or your service who are not your ideal client, and it's not going to fit quite well. Um, and that just shows that you have a product that is targeted and it's hard and, oh, God, I'm totally, you know, hypocrite right here because I do take on bad feedback and go, oh, my God, I'm the worst, I suck, blah, blah, blah. But even I know that um, those people were not the right fit and so I work, I try to work really hard to filter uh, right from the start the the right fit versus the wrong fit because I don't want people feeling negative about things but it's not always going to work some people will come through they'll watch your staff they'll um, maybe purchase your staff who are not the right fit um, and you know what what recommendations because you I mean marketing is your strength what recommendations would you have around that because there are you know is there a way to stop those people from coming through yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm a really big advocate for making sure that you qualify the leads and the clients that are coming through in your business. So there's a couple of different ways that you can do that. One is through your messaging and making sure you are really, really clear with people who your target market is and who you help. Because if you can tell people exactly who your service is for, um, and this is, I think, harder for service-based businesses in particular because your service is so intangible, it's really about uh, clearly articulating and getting those really strong 
strong messages and descriptions out there so that you are qualifying and attracting only those people that you want to be working with. So my number one tip is make sure that you have your target market really, really clearly defined, but also communicated. So often, you know, people are really clear on who their target market is, but it's not in their communications materials. So make sure it's on your website, in your social media profiles, uh, in your posts, but you're, you're really, really talking to that person and you're telling them, this is who I work with, because automatically then you'll start, um, you know, rejecting some of, or some of those, or ref- what's the word, um, deflecting a lot of those people yeah. who, are, who are not your target market. So number one is messaging. Number two is make sure you have some kind of uh, application form or inquiry form or some kind of, um, you know, key questions that you're asking people before you even either meet with them or before they can apply to join your program. Uh, have some kind of just filter in there so that you can do that check around you know, just double checking whether this person is going to be the right fit for your business. And often that you'll find in those questions as well, you're only going to get those people who are really serious about working with you, actually going to the effort and the energy and the process of filling out an application form or or making some kind of um, call or booking in a discovery time or that sort of thing. I think we've all had those people that, you know, kind of message and go, hey, can I ask a quick question? It's it's just about making sure that you've got those application forms or those inquiry and those qualification processes in place. Um, and then the third thing that I would say to people is make sure you have a bit of a uh, process or some kind of system in place where you've got some messages already ready to go when you know it's not going to be a good fit. Because sometimes people will still go through all of that process and go, yeah, yeah, I still want your service, but you know yourself it's not going to be a good fit and this person's going to be a bit of a a red flag and a nightmare client for you down the track potentially. Um, And so sometimes it's just about having a couple of statements ready and or a couple of pieces of material that you can send people to where they might be able to go and get some help, or maybe you can refer them to somebody else who you think might be a better fit for them in their business. So I think just being a bit prepared for how to respond when you're in that situation, because it's really hard to kind of get it right when you're trying to do it on the fly and on the spot. But if you've got something prepared in the background and ready to go and a way in which you can politely decline to work with someone, it just it gets you out of that situation before you're even in it. So um, being a bit prepared is probably there. My third tip in terms of, yeah, just making sure you're getting the good fit. You want to be working with your dream clients. Life's too short. and You know, business is hard enough, let alone when you've got some uh, nightmare clients thrown in the mix as well. Oh, I completely agree. But, you know, if you're new in business, you kind of want to work with anyone. If, a, you know, if, if a three-legged dog came to your front door and offered you some money, you'd be like, oh, yeah, I can teach you how to run a VA business for sure. So, you know, what do we do when people are feeling like, I, I need to take these clients even if they're a pain? Yeah, it is a really hard one because the temptation to take on that client and to get uh, some income in the door uh, is is really um, really difficult to start with. So I'd probably say you know just perhaps have a bit of a not like a trial period, but but have some kind of steps in the process where you can get out of working together. If you find that you know you start off initially uh, and things are, you know, you're not quite sure at the beginning, maybe you can just make a small scope in the the project that you're working on. So maybe just take on a small part of what they're looking for and have a review process kind of set up or some kind of thing in the future where you've got a bit of a check-in just to see how it's going. Uh, I've seen that actually a lot with some of my clients who have started working, particularly with marketing service providers. There's a lot of Uh, people out there, it's really, really hard to choose, you know, the right web developer or the right social media manager or the right VA. You know, there's a lot of um, people to choose from and sometimes it's really hard to know who's the right one as well. So having those check-in processes or just having that smaller scope to start with um, is a really good way uh, in which to do that. And then the other thing I would say, and this I think comes up a lot with nightmare clients, is around money and getting paid. So if you are in a situation with a client where you're not sure whether it is the right fit, um, making sure that you're actually either asking for the payment up front or at least 50% up front if it's a service that you're doing for them and that you're delivering. But upfront payment is a really big one with nightmare clients making or you know, potential nightmare clients, I should say. Uh, not everyone t- it turns out to be that way. But, you know, asking for payment up front is a really good way to kind of avoid some of those issues down the track because often payment is where 
the problems start to arise. And particularly when you're delivering a service and someone says, oh, no, I'm not happy with what you've delivered, at least if you have that payment up front, you're having a conversation about refunds rather than collecting the payment and chasing it to begin with. So um, you're getting compensated in some way. Nice, yeah. And at, at the end of the day, it's all about looking after the most important aspect of your business, which is you and your mental health and your physical health. And, you know, when we accept, um, you know, situations that are not beneficial to our physical and mental health just to potentially claw some money out of someone who <laughs> sometimes it gets to that point um you've got to wonder why you're doing it and um you know how the, that's when we need to be looking at okay so there's something wrong with this model and it needs to be changed because that's not that's not a beautiful successful business and we want people loving what they do because as you said before it's tough it is really tough running a business you've got to be self motivated you've yeah. got to be willing to adjust um willing to grow putting yourself out there you know taking on the risk of the tall poppy syndrome um, the risk of people telling you what they think, whether they like you or not, whether you, that information is useful or not. So having systems in place. So when I do training for virtual assistants, one of the first element that we look at is you as a person. And we've also got some stuff in there around looking after yourself and putting boundaries in place and, and doing things, simple things like accessing um, you know, meditation or exercise or, you know, eating healthy, whatever it might be that you need to keep looking after you so that your business can be worthwhile but also to maintain it because you can't if you're not feeling like, you know, any good. And imposter syndrome is something that chews away at you. Um, it's just like a little disease that, that can really cripple you in, in business. So try and I love having this conversation with you because it's about strategies to remove the opportunities for imposter syndrome. Um, they are going to come up. So what's your final tip for people? If, if someone's come through the system and, and they've made you feel, you know, and, and you feel like this, it's not fair, it's not a fair call, um, they made you feel inadequate, made you feel like, the, you know, potentially you're not in the right space that you should be in because you're not good enough. What's your advice? Yeah, I think uh, the first thing is communication with that person. So, you know, making sure you're reaching out to them offline, not, not via social media and those types of things. So whether it's an email or a phone call, um, but just reaching out to that person and, and perhaps trying to understand their perspective and why it is that they've felt like that, because there is a lesson in every experience that we have in business. So, you know, finding out their perspective first. And I always find starting... Um, you know, with an apology, whether it's an apology for what you've done or m more so like, um, you know, I'm sorry that you feel that way, mm. but let's have a chat about why, um, you know, I'd love to understand a little bit more about why you're feeling the way that you are or why, um, you know, you, you aren't happy with the service that I've provided or it just just getting that understanding and opening up those communication channels uh, is, is going to be really helpful. And then you can make a decision about what the reality is because mm. if you are hearing from someone and, you've, and you're, you're hearing all of their explanation, sometimes even them repeating it back to themselves, they can actually start to realise that perhaps they were a bit, bit unfair with their comments tree to begin with I would actually say it out loud because I think there's all these keyboard warriors out there you know it's very easy to, to throw something out there and funnily enough I actually saw something the other day where someone went on to one of these big Facebook groups and apologized for calling out a business and, and how unprofessional they were actually doing it online and shaming a business before actually having the conversation with the business owner and I nearly <laughs> stopped the screenshot me because I was like wow I've never actually seen anyone do that before because most of the time you just see all these this negative comments and people kind of shaming other, other people's businesses unfairly um so yeah i think opening that communication channel understanding for both perspectives and then you decide whether or not that's the reality or whether that person is just you know a difficult person that you've had to unfortunately come across an experience in business and and just i think take it as a learning don't take it as a negative take it as okay what have I learned from this situation? How do I avoid this type of situation going forward? Um, and perhaps are there any changes I can make to my business systems and processes just to, to ensure that it doesn't happen again and to ensure that I've, you know, maintained my own kind of mental health and self, 
well-being, uh, you know, just by having these systems and processes in place in your business. Because if if you do have it, like like you said, you are, you are always going to have people out there that, um, you know, may not be a good fit. But if you have enough systems and processes, the, the risk of it happening can, you know, seriously decreases. So, uh, you know, making sure that you've got those things in place and you're prepared when it happens, I yeah. think. Yeah, it, it's it's easy to recover from. You just need to understand it, learn from it, and then move forward. The best thing you can do. Beautiful, great advice there. Thank you so much, Haley, for your time and your insight. That's been really, really useful, and hopefully allows people to sort of take it and, and take action on something that feels so, um, you know, in the air and uncontrollable at times. It feels like something. It's because it's an emotion. It feels like it's something that you can't actually do anything about. But there are strategies there that you can put in place to to empower yourself and to make it so that your business is something that you love and that it's working with people that you really are inspired and passionate about. So thank you, Hayley. Um, how can people find you if they want to learn more about what you offer? Thanks, Rosie. It's great to have a chat with you. Uh, my business is My Client Strategy. Uh, I'm a marketing and business coach and you'll be able to find me at uh, myclientstrategy.com. Uh, and, yeah, I'd, uh, I really uh, want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to come along and, and talk to you about this today because I think it's something that, uh, you know, a lot of businesses struggle with, so it's fantastic to hear you talking about it today. Beautiful. Thank you. Hey, hey, hey. Thank you for listening to the Virtually Yours podcast, Outsourcing Mysteries Exposed. Between now and our next session, I know you're going to be hanging out to take some action on outsourcing in your business. So head on over to virtuallyyours.com.au and you can download some information there about the best ways to outsource for business growth. If you're a virtual assistant, make sure you join us. We have an amazing virtual assistant community at Virtually Yours. Aussie VAs connecting and helping each other grow. Have a fantastic day and I'll see you at the next podcast.